Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello and welcome to the session on L1 and L2 regularization on linear regression. These are also called ridge regression and the lasso regression. Let's try to understand what they do. Re any kind of regularization helps to lessen the overfitting of the model, which means any model built works equally well on an unseen data. So I try to build a model on a data which I already have and try to run the same model on a data which the model has not seen, which means it's a new model, new data for the model. I'm I can expect the model to run more or less the same way it was running on the train data set. So that is when I have less overfitting. Now, not only this, the these kind of regularization techniques are sometimes also used for a feature importance. So there are many benefits of it. Let's try to understand how this exactly works and we'll try to have it in the code as well. Now this is what a linear regression looks like. We'll have a Y component and we'll have many X components for a multiple linear regression and we'll have some variables and some fixed values or the coefficients for the each axis. So in other words, I can have an equation like Y equal to a, a1 x1 a2 x2 a3 x3 where a1 a2 and a3 are the coefficients of the y now here this introduces another term which is which we can call it as alpha as of now and this alpha is nothing but the sum of the square of all the coefficients so if i have a1 a2 a3 a4 up to an alpha will be sum of all of them a1 plus a2 plus a3 till an and i'll square it up the reason I square it up is because I might end up in a negative value, which I don't want. I always want a positive value in the alpha. So I, instead of keeping it as it is, I try to square it up. That gives me a positive value. This is nothing but, nothing but the ridge regression. We do a similar thing in the lasso regression as well, which in which we introduce the same term alpha, but instead of squaring it up, I take the absolute value of alpha. So even if it is a negative, let's say I have a negative 5, it will consider it as 5. If I have 10, it will consider it as 10. So instead of squaring it up, I take the um, the positive value out of it, this, the scalar value out of it. All right? So now the absolute value of the coefficient and the square of the coefficient, this is the only difference between both of them. And one more difference is lasso regression also helps me in doing a feature importance. Now, how does it do that? In, in a lasso regression, if it finds a variable, for example, let's say the x10 over here, and that's not an important variable, that's not a driving factor which will decide a y. It's not a big factor which actually can be a basis on which I can predict the value of y. In such cases, lasso will add a coefficient of zero. To the to the variable so that that in that in, in in other words it just drops the variable right so that's how the lasso regression works ridge regression how does it work is initially before we implement a ridge regression or a lasso regression we'll have the equation of the beta which is nothing but the coefficient of it and we can write it as the x prime which is nothing but the x transpose into x here I have x as matrices right I do an inverse of it and again I multiply it by x transpose into y so this is the equation of the coefficients without applying a ridge or a lasso regression with the application of ridge or a lasso regression I would introduce a term called lambda which is nothing but the coefficient of the alpha over here and I would add an identity matrix because I have the uh, alpha over here, right? That would represent the uh, identity matrix. And I do the same, rest remains the same, x to x of transpose and all the y's. All right, so that was the theory part of the ridge and the lasso. Let's try to see how exactly it works on a data set. Okay, so this is a prediction which I'm trying to make and uh, I'm trying to make a prediction of a value of a car, right? Given the data set, 
I am trying to predict what should be the price of the car. I've done all kind of data manipulation, data preparation, and finally now I am in the stage where I am trying to build a model. Okay, so we need to remember uh, we need to import two packages, the ridge and the lasso that's available under the scikit-learn, the sklearn, and before we do that, we need to import it. Okay, so now let's try to understand how do we implement it in a code. Okay, I define the term params, which is a mandatory a mandatory uh, parameter for a grid search CV. I'm doing a grid search CV here. Inside the params, I define the alphas, and here I define all the possible alphas that I can. This is something which which is left to the user's discretion. You, out of experience, you, you might come up with the values which actually could fit the data set which I have. So here, the prior knowledge of the data before working on it comes into picture, okay? So now I try to fit the data and these are the values of alpha ranging from 0 0.001 to 1000, which is 1000. Usually we don't take such a high range, but for the training purpose, I try to keep it a bit wide range so that it's easier to understand the different behavior, right? I do a grid search CV. Estimator is ridge. The param grid, I pass it over here. The scoring is negative absolute error, which means I'm trying to build the model and score it based on the R square, which is the uh, error or the, the square of the difference between the actual value and the real value, predicted value. I do a folds and number of folds is 5. I do a train score and I want the score of it so I make it as true. Now I do a fit. I do a model.fit. Okay, let's see how my model performs. I try to get the results, uh, the model CV results. I save it in a data frame, CV results. I do a head of the data frame. It prints me the first five um, records. And I see I have the, the parameters. I have the metrics for all of the combinations of the params, alpha 001 and param alpha 001, less than that. I have the alpha for that. So I have the combination of all the parameters which I have given and I have the metrics for it. So you can just choose whichever metrics fits you the best, right? So now, let's try to plot and visualize how these things are working here, okay? So I draw a plot here. I draw the absolute error on the x-axis and the alpha which I have chosen on the y, I'm sorry, it's on the y-axis and the alpha which I have chosen on the x-axis. Okay, if I see here the alpha the performance of the alpha goes high till 15 and slowly it decreases okay so the lowest uh, r square i could see here is at this point and again it starts decreasing so in a way i can say this could be my point where i have the best possible alpha okay so i take the alpha as 15 in my case i do a ridge regression I get the coefficients for all the variables which I have and this is the best possible coefficient as for the ridge regression. All right, let's try to implement the same thing in the lasso as well, okay? So I import the package for lasso. I define a method out of it. I pass the estimator as lasso. Param grid is the same which I had for the ridge. I would it would take the same para parameters from 0 0.0001 to 1000. It's not necessary to keep that wide always. You can have it for I have it for um, the training purpose over here. Folds is the same. It's, it's the same parameters which I have chosen for ridge. I do a model dot fit over here. Let's see what are the results. I save the results in uh, CV results. I see this is a nice data frame which has been generated with the metrics of the lasso this time. I try to plot the same similar kind of um, graph over here. Negative absolute mean error goes to the y-axis, alpha goes to the x-axis. I see there is a good alpha over here, somewhere in between. So I feel this is around 100 which performs the best.
okay so I choose the alpha as 100 I do a lasso dot fit and that would be my best possible lasso fit I see the coefficients now if you notice over here many of the coefficients have become zero which means it has actually dropped these columns it doesn't want these columns the reason being it feels these are not important columns they don't drive the value the predictor uh, variable which is the price over here for me right so it has just made them zero and has a coefficient value which is considered pretty much higher than what we had in rich regression right so that was about the rich and the lasso regression thank you very much